Hello everyone, this is a video series on setting up a Vortex quadcopter by Immersion RC for UHF or Long Range FPV. I'm currently using the Vortex 250 Pro, but it should also work with the Vortex 285 and other versions of the Vortexes that may be released in the near future. In this episode, I'm going to cover how to set up UHF using Team Black Sheep's long range radio system called Crossfire. I currently have the TBS Crossfire system installed on the Tyrannus Plus. Just for size comparison, the transmitter module is a little bit smaller than my iPhone 5S. Not too bulky, it's just a little bit bigger than your standard JR module, as seen right here. In a different video, I had set up my Radiolink 89 system. If you want to use your Crossfire system with the Radiolink, the setup is really quick. I'm going to just go over this really quickly, but the rest of the video is going to be focusing on setting up with your Tyrannus. Power up the radio system first, go to mode, and we need to turn off the internal radio first. Go to parameter, and turn RF mode to off. Once you have turned that off, the little green light up here will uh, no longer illuminate. Go to end, and now we're going to configure trainer, because we're going to use the crossfire on the trainer port. Press trainer and make sure everything is select to function. Once you have everything select to set to function, we can connect our Crossfire system here. I ordered my Crossfire system off of HeliPow, and since HeliPow is the main distributor of the radio link, they happen to include a, a, another cable. Uh, this is a data port cable that works with this radio. Some other radio systems have it too, but if you don't have this cable, you're going to have to purchase it somewhere online, Amazon or wherever. It's really easy, you just plug this cable in. It's keyed, of course. Once you have the cable plugged in, it will use the uh, DSC for, for the interfacing with the uh, transmitter module. It looks like a little stereo jack with a little uh, cable right here. This is included with the Crossfire system. Simply just plug this in, and then we'll plug this into the RC input. Once you have this plugged in and you have your radio system on, this thing will not power on because this data cable can't provide power uh, to external devices. We're going to have to use external power. We have this 3S LiPo battery. And just note, 3S is the maximum voltage this thing can handle. If you go to 4 cell or higher, you're going to end up burning out the transmitter module. So be careful of that. And then before powering up any transmitter or receiver too, make sure that you have the antenna uh, mounted on here, otherwise you'll risk burning out the system because the radiated power has nowhere to go. Plug that in and you're good to go. That's pretty much it for setting up with the radio link. Let's go back and focus on the Tyrannus Plus. Before we start, we want to make sure that uh, your TBS Crossfire system and uh, Tyrannus Plus is on the latest firmware. Let me go over, before I go over the firmware, your end results should look like this by the end of the video. Power up the transmitter first. Then power up the quadcopter. Everything has bounded. Green light, also green on the back. We're transmitting at uh, 10 milliwatts right here. You see all the sticks are working, different flight modes are working as well. So let's go over how I did this. I was mentioning earlier about firmware versions. And uh, let me find my external battery. Right here, here, here it is. In order for the micro receiver to work, uh, you're going to need to be on version firmware, firmware version 1.06 or higher. I, I didn't want to use the larger receiver, it's more expensive and it also is bulkier and heavier. It's not needed on this system. The micro receiver just works as well and it's also small. I can also put this inside the quadcopter like I did with this uh, radio link transmitter or receiver. I'm currently using version 1.09. If you don't know what version firmware you're using, uh, go to long press and hold the joystick. Just use the little, uh, 
use that as a scroll wheel and just go to about and we're on version 1.9. You can easily update this uh, transmitter in the system uh, using a TBS agent. No, no additional drivers need to install. You just get your micro USB cable and just plug it in your computer. Again, when you're updating or powering on the system, make sure that you have the antenna on here. Next, let's go to Toronto and make sure we're on the correct firmware for this. If we go to menu right here, long press and hold menu and go to the fifth page, we'll see what version we're on. Well, I'm on version 1.06 and it works fine. Anything higher, any, this version or higher will work with the Crossfire system. Let's plug this back in and we're going to go set up the system here. We're going to create a new model. We'll go to menu, press menu once. Go down to an empty model slot, press enter. Long press and hold enter, create model. And then select quadcopter here. You can use the arrow, uh, the positive and minus here. Press enter and we're going to use the default settings. You can just blitz through the default settings by pressing page, 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 and we are done. Press enter long to continue. Now our model selected, now press page, and we're gonna set up a fifth uh, switch so we can switch between the flight modes. The included flight modes on the Vortex would be angled, acro, and horizon. And we wanna use a switch to flip that, be between that. Go to page, I guess since we're here, we'll name the model something, uh, call it A. And then we're gonna go to the sixth page, I believe. It's called, uh, it's called mixing. Don't go to inputs, that's a little deceiving. Mixer. We're gonna go to channel five right here. Press enter and then give it a name. I guess you could call it B. I would probably give it a better name like flight. I did that on a different on a different model. But for illustration purposes and to speed up the video, just name it something. Source, we're on S1. This is the default one here. Doesn't make sense to have a knob and it's only uh, it won't really work well when you're flying and it only does one thing. We need to assign it to, uh, to a different uh, switch. A three positional switch is, prefer is preferred, but you could set up different uh, mixes if you want. Press on source with enter. Now it's flashing and we're ready to set up our source. I guess I will use SG, but some of you guys might like SD or SC. Flip your switch to what you want. And now we're on SG switch. Press enter and we are done. Let's uh, get out of here and we're going to set up our external module because it's not powered up. Go to page and we're going to go back to page two. Okay, so just a quick shortcut, just press the plus button to go all the way to the bottom and we're going to turn off the internal RF module first. Internal RF, just press enter and go all the way until it's uh, off. Now go to external RF mode and power and uh, select this one and turn it on. We're going to select a uh, CRSF, which is Crossfire, and as the Crossfire protocol is much faster, higher bandwidth than the, using PPM. I want to recommend using PPM for long range, as it's uh, high, it's high latency and it just isn't very good. Use a Crossfire one, and the latest firmware of this one does support it. And we are done. That's pretty much it for setting up your uh, Trinus with this system. And just to verify it's uh, all set and good, it's powered up and everything. Next, let's set up the receiver with the Vortex. Just to save time for the video, I already made a little uh, uh, S-Bus cable. You don't need to buy any parts or anything, but you're going to need to solder it. Uh, cable together because you can't switch the inputs or the pins on here because this uh, Pico blade is a little bit bigger than this one. This is a four pin Pico blade and uh, the one that was inc uh, included, this is the S-Bus cable. I've used it for my radio link receiver. Make sure that uh, you can, I, I, for me I wanted to save this cable because I might use it for something else or maybe a different receiver or maybe if I decide to go with the diverse receiver I could just plug this in directly. 
but to avoid destroying it, I just made a new one. I used a, I used a spectrum cable that was included with the Vortex and also this uh, the other cable, the, uh, the mic receiver cable here. I simply just cut it and then I uh, took the pin 4 on here uh, off of the spectrum cable. The end result was this uh, nice short uh, S-Bus cable and for polarity reasons and, orienta and uh, orientation or color, color regions, make sure that you have them in the right, right positions. So it's going to be black, it's going to be white, black, no connection or space, and then, uh, and then uh, power or your plus 5 volts. So again, white, black, no connection, red. Once you've done that, let's go proceed to the next step. Again, you're probably going to have to cross over some cables like I did right here. Plug that in here. A little tricky to plug this in. If you're wondering what this other port is, this is the BST, BST cable port, which allows uh, additional telemetry to be uh, shown in OSD. Fortunately, it doesn't work with the Vortex. It only works on uh, Team Black Sheep products, and I don't think even the Vortex has a capability of showing RSSI or other stuff. It's kind of unfortunate. So we'll be skipping this cable. Plug your, uh, your S-Bus cable in, and it's the white side that goes this way into this port right here. Here it is right here, nice view. Easy. You can also mount your uh, RF, your uh, your receiver into the quadcopter. Uh, make sure that it's not covering the the altimeter, the thing that tells you the elevation of how high your vortex is. This little foam right here, just mount it like right here. You can use some double side tape, and then uh, you could just route, reroute your antenna through the little uh, LED board, uh, something like that. I'll, I'll probably figure out a way to make this look a little bit neater. Um, if you're not really comfortable with putting your receiver inside the vortex, you could just simply mount it on the back here. Just route this cable through here. I like to make it look nice and just to protect it from any crashes. And if I want to mount something here, which I do have something mounted, uh, it's best to mount it inside. That was a pretty quick process. Next, we're going to power up our transmitter and we're going to bind the receiver uh, to our crossfire. When I power it up, it's probably going to be already bounded with the green light, but I'll show you how you do that anyway. It's really easy to do. Again, when you're working on your quadcopter, make sure that you remove the propellers and have your video transmitter antenna on there as you don't want to risk burning out the, uh, the, the transmitter here. So make sure the antenna is on and your props are off. Again, just to reiterate. Okay, so to bind the micro receiver with the crossfire, very easy to do. Long press and hold the joystick. And then we're going to go to about. Whoops, not about, sorry. Binding. And now it's in bind mode, so it's on the yellow right here. And then we're going to uh, make sure the, the antenna is separated enough from the receiver as it, you can risk damaging the radio system. It's even mentioned on the on the Black Sheep website. Press the little button right here. It takes literally a second to bind. Binding complete. Amazing. Green, green. We're good to go. Once you have your receiver bounded with your transmitter, we need to set up the vortex. You'll need an FPV monitor or use your goggles for this. And I'm going to just reset this to show you the uh, setup process. You can press the little switch on the back right here. I'm using a, I have a different version of the Vortex. It has a little LED cover, so I got to use something pointy since it covers the, the switch. Wait for the, wait for the beep and second beep. Now we're in a setup wizard mode right here. We're currently detecting the receiver. It's going to scan through a bunch of them. I also did skip a step, my bad. 
uh, when you have your receiver set up, make sure that it's in SBUS mode, otherwise it won't recognize it. Go to RX Micro right here and select SBUS. If you select between the different ones like using PPM, PPM won't work because it's in the wrong port. Uh, so make sure it's in, uh, in the SBUS mode. And we're good. Now it's pretty much a standard setup pro uh, procedure with the Vortex. This one's got a little bit different uh, since we're using this receiver. Uh, it involves having to do uh, bring all st the sticks all the way to the end and back. It's kind of weird versus uh, on my other video. I didn't really have to do that. Anyway, we're going to center all controls. Move, roll, control, left and hold. This is the roll right here. And then we got to go all the way to the end. That's the extra step needed to be done. Move yaw, this is yaw right here. Move to the opposite direction. Move throttle to min and hold. Move out of the direction. Okay, we're all done setting it up. It's gonna play the annoying Imperial March, the extended version too. Oh, that's pretty annoying. After it has made this uh, completion ring and it sounds, just power cycle the quadcopter. And then we can repower back on. And here's all the information I'm using. Uh, battery capacity is set to wrong because I'm using a, uh, a 2200 milliamp 3 cell pack. Make sure that you set up an OSD, it's pretty easy to do. And uh, yeah, you can just uh, enter OSD by moving your stick out of flight. So your roll stick to the left and then just go into bottom for OSD. Just set up normally. I won't go over this. Now that everything is pretty much set up and our quadcopter and our TBS crossfire system is bounded together, we need to do one last important step is set up the failsafe system. In order to do that, go to your crossfire transmitter, long press and hold the joystick right here, and then we're gonna go to set failsafe. What failsafe does is that in case you lose any uh, radio system or anything like that, uh, it will use the last position of your, of your sticks. So make sure that you set your desired position of, of your sticks, and then uh, press uh, set failsafe. Failsafe set. Let's test out our failsafe. Okay, let's test it out. Ready? Looks like our failsafe does work. Pretty nice. Last little thing is that for transmitting power, uh, a setting I like to make sure I'm using is if you is using dynamic power. Go to general, and then set dynamic power on. You can change your max power to whatever you want. I can just set it to 500, but it will know on the system when it's close by to reduce the amount of power needed. And if you want more power, you're gonna need to uh, use an external power pack. If you're wondering, can I uh, power the system on with the with the JR module installed and everything, yes you can. These are on separate uh, separate circuits and this, it won't burn out the system. I double checked that with the support team um, and I made a ticket. I have a little nice sticky Velcro pad right here. Just plug that in here. When you're using an external LiPo pack, make sure that you have a battery buzzer here um, so that your uh, LiPo pack doesn't go below a certain voltage and you can risk destroying your pack. Also, make sure that your frequency is set to your appropriate place. I'm in the United States. Uh, I've set mine to 915 megahertz. That's pretty much it on setting up the, the TBS Crossfire system on the Vortex. It wasn't too complicated of a setup and pretty easy and straightforward. 
The next video will show you on how you set up the video transmitter to a different frequency. We're going to be using 1.3 gigahertz. I don't have 2.4 uh, gigahertz because I couldn't find the the right transmitter wasn't available at the t at this time. As this will be needed for uh, true long range FPV. You can't really get long ranges with uh, with the supplied 5.5.8 gigahertz radio or video transmitter on here. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know. And as always, have a nice day.